Salutations, everyone, and welcome to What Mattered, the show where I tell you what mattered in the news this week. Well, let's face it, guys, it's just been a really, really fucking shitty week. We had uh, just uh, a lot of bad news this week, and I'm not talking about the the Lannisters of the NFL winning another d- damn Super Bowl, or anything that happened in video games and movies and comic books, which I will get later, get to later on in the show. But for those of you who watched last week's episode where I talked about uh, a certain man by the name of Monty Ohm who was in a coma, and there was a fundraiser for his medical expenses. He passed away this week at the age of 33. Um, We now know a little bit more about the conditions of what happened. There was, uh, he had a severe allergic reaction to a standard medical procedure. Just, you know, just one of those incredibly rare occurrences that just happened to happen and he couldn't recover. And it is very sad and just, terrible to learn that someone that you love and care about and whose work that you've admired for so long tend to learn that he's passed away and we won't get to see you know a lot of his work that he would have made um i stand by his family at rooster teeth and his wife sheena who is very talented as well who am i a big fan of and you should watch the tribute video that Rooster Teeth made. Um, they played it during the live stream, and I think they uploaded it to YouTube recently. Very, very beautiful tribute to Monty Ohm and just his thought process on life and time and work and watching things and creating things. It really puts things into perspective about just how special he was. I mean, the man... On on uh, Tuesday, when it was announced that he had passed, it was he was the number one trending topic on Twitter globally, and was top story trending on Facebook, which made Facebook relevant for one day. It uh, he impacted a lot of people in a lot of different ways in the things that he created in uh, Haloid, Dead Fantasy, all of his other older animations, Red vs. Blue, and of course Ruby. Um, the anime that uh, he created and directed. Uh, he, he's done a lot of work in the 33 years he had with us. And it's really, really depressing to think of the work that we won't get to see that he would have created. And just as a person, just an incredible person, just probably the hardest working human being on the planet. And such a creative one. You could take a look at Anything that he's done from Dead Fantasy to Haloid to Red vs. Blue to Ruby, you take a look at all of the things that he's done and you can just, you get that Monty Ohm flair, that Monty Ohm feel, where everything was efficient, aesthetically pleasing, beautiful, like a dance. He was an amazing dancer, as it be. And just, it was unlike anything anyone else had ever created and will ever create from now till forever. And it was a style all his own, and it was some of the most entertaining things to watch. And he emphasizes, he emphasized to to always watch, to watch movies, watch shows, just watch anything, to absorb all you can. And he was one that wanted to create, continually create. He time was always of the essence for him. It's like he knew he didn't have a lot of time to do as much as he wanted to do. So he was the most time efficient dude on the world. It didn't matter if it saved him a millisecond on putting buttons in on the microwave or doing a a keyboard shortcut or an animation. The dude just wanted to do as much as he can, as fast as he can, just so he could continue on to the next thing. You know, the only thing that stops us from doing the great things is time. And this man treated time like everyone wishes that they could. To always be working, to always be creating, to always be loving, to always be watching and absorbing 
and giving people things to love. That's something that I think we can all admire. That's something that I aspire to do in my future, to I want to absorb as much as I can, and I want to be part of a creative process um, because, you know, I want to give people something to enjoy. Hopefully I can do a little tiny bit of that here on YouTube, but, uh, you know, not none of us can be Monty Ohm, and he will dearly be missed, and I thank you, Monty, for everything you created. I never did get to meet you. Um, I tried to get you to sign my Season 9 DVD of Red vs. Blue. Got signed by Carolina and Wash and uh, Sheila and Jack, who dies two minutes into the season. Spoilers. And Monty was there at Comic-Con. Uh, this is 2013, I believe. No, 2012. He was there, and I went to the booth like every hour I was talking to Jack like where's Monty where's Monty and he was like I don't know we have a hotel room for him he's just he's just everywhere I just I never never caught him at the booth never caught him on the floor but at one point in time I was in the same building as Monty Ohm and uh, that's special enough as it is but I wish I could just just would have met him got his autograph got to shake his hand got to tell him how much I enjoyed his work and this was even before Ruby came out which is a fantastic show and it's a, it's a damn shame we won't get to see any more of what he created outside of what he did create and we just haven't seen yet on production of Volume 3 of Ruby and other things that he might have been a part of. And uh, I'm going to miss you, Monty, and thank you for everything you've done. Now on to uh, the other news uh, this week. Uh, let's, start with, uh, let's start with some anime, you know, since Monty is a creative anime. Um, it looks like the people behind 300 Rise of an Empire are set to make a Robotech movie, which many of you know, I've, I've mentioned before in the past, and they were trying to get a new season of the show, and Harmony Gold is an evil, evil corporation, I understand that now, thank you guys for uh, letting me know about that in the last video where I mentioned them, but uh, Back in 2007, remember to Tobey Maguire got the rights to the movie and was like set to star and it was just in gestation forever and ever. It was just one of those movies that just like you hear like, oh, someone wants to make it, maybe it's going to be made, someone's picked it up and it gets talked about every couple of years or so. Well, here it is again. And um, I gotta say, I'm, I, uh, I hope it doesn't happen. I really don't because a, a, a few reasons. 300, Rise of an Empire. I personally didn't see it, you know, the first 300 was good, but like the t the ship had sailed for a sequel to that film, and people didn't really like it, and uh, you know, Robotech, while it's an anime that I enjoy immensely, I really really like uh, that show, um, it was just fantastic, um, great books as well, I don't think that, you know, A, no one's done a good anime to movie production translation ever, and it doesn't look like with the couple in gestation right now, or just, eh, just, there's a lot that could go wrong, especially when you don't treat it with the respect that it should. A Robotech movie with giant robots fighting other giant robots and giant aliens, um, you're gonna need a huge budget for that, and for, you know, a, uh, an American studio to try to adapt a Japanese anime and to not give it the production quality that it deserves and needs to make it a good translation to the big screen is um, uh, really, really unlikely. So, I mean, if it is made, I hope it's good, but at this point, uh, we just, uh, we have yet to see any good signs of especially American production companies or Japanese production companies make it a good anime movie in live action. Speaking of live action adaptations, there is uh, a report on the Wall Street Journal that people have been talking about all day the past few days about uh, a Legend of Zelda live action show coming to Netflix. That's a pretty crazy idea. Seems like something that you would never hear about as true, but I don't know where the source came from or if there's any truth to this matter whatsoever, but it's a really, really weird prospect of a show. They were tr the, the pitch was apparently like uh, Game of Thrones, but it's family friendly, which is 
those two things do not mix. You can't you can't say those two things and be like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. I, I mean, I did just start watching Game of Thrones, but it's a really good show, and nothing about that show is family friendly. And Zelda does not have the same elements outside of they have swords and shields and stuff. Um, there's no like political undertone. There's no uh, you know, it won't be able to show the graphic violence or you know the other things that this show that Game of Thrones has been able to show and. Legend of Zelda, as a narrative standpoint, isn't all that special. It has had a lot of great games with good gameplay, with good uh, music and and theming and cinematic shots. But as far as like interesting characters, um, your main character is a mute. And the one time where he did talk, we had Philip CDI nonsense happen. So that's weird. And it's just. It, it won't work. It won't work. You would have to have Nintendo's blessing and they would want control over it and you know all the stuff that Nintendo does when they have control over things just is very very messy and trying to make a live adaptation of a video game and turn it into a TV show even if it is Netflix. A video game TV show has never been attempted before outside of cartoons and has never had a successful movie and Legend of Zelda, which isn't known for great storytelling or character development outside of, you know, like other games that might have really, really good stories and really good characters, Zelda isn't really known for that, even if it is a beloved franchise. So just way too many negative things about this kind of project that I, I really hope it doesn't happen because it sounds like a terrible, terrible idea that will have so many potholes in the road ahead. In gaming news, Sony has sold off its gaming subsidiary, Sony Online Entertainment, makers of EverQuest, uh, the DC Universe Online, or the new game H1Z1. Uh, they, they sold it off to another company, they're rebranding it, and they're going to make immediate changes. Um, on the, the forum of DC Universe Online, they said that they're going to try to integrate a cross-platform play between PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and PC players so they can all play together, which is a great idea if they can pull it off. Um, they also, since they're no longer affiliated with Sony, they're going to start working on some Xbox One games, so who knows what they're going to port to the Xbox One. Um, a lot of people are clamoring for a DCU to be on Xbox platforms, which I don't think is going to happen, especially since it's, uh, you know, it's an older game. Even though it is getting support, it just got a new update a couple days ago, but uh, maybe we'll start seeing a lot more games from this company come to the Xbox One, and they want to start working on it right away. So, you know, while it is no longer Sony Entertainment Online, which we've known for, you know, many years to give some quality gaming experiences, is no longer part of Sony, so there might be some ups and downs with that, but, you know, things do look positive, so I look forward to see what this new company can do. 343 Industries has released information on the Halo 5 Guardians beta and the changes that they plan to make for the full retail release of the game, which will be coming out later this year. A whole bevy of changes that they've said, not really any of the ones that I specifically talked about in my Halo 5 Guardian Impressions beta video, which you can check out on my channel. Um, they've said that they're going to take uh, uh, quite a few changes, none of them very you know, drastic. Uh, you're going to be able to uh, disable sprint in custom game modes. They're going to uh, decrease the speed of the top sprint speed. They're going to uh, decrease headshot damage on fully automatic weapons in Smart Link, which is their way of saying aim down sights. So maybe that will make the SMG weaker, I doubt it. But um, they've also said they're going to change, you know, just some things that they didn't think that were going to happen, like some weird ground pound mechanics and, you know, w glitches and like, just like matchmaking issues and rankings uh, competitively and you know, stuff like that. Tweaking some of the weapons, uh, mostly the power weapons, um, like the, the Hydra weapon, they're going to make better and more uh, intuitive. They're adding a, a new rocket launcher, legendary variants, that's power weapons. So um, not really any of the problems that I said that they should have fixed, like having a grenade indicator, not making the power weapon so damn powerful, having a creator class maybe, um, not making the SMG so damn powerful, or have everyone spawn with two grenades at all times. 
um, you know, fix the spawns and maybe have better maps. But um, hopefully these changes do make the game more the better. Um, I still will be picking up because it's Halo after all. And um, hopefully more changes will be coming that they haven't talked about yet um, to make the experience just a little better. But I'm sure for mainstream Halo fans, they like all of these additions and what Halo 5 Guardians has showed them so far in sort of making things more simplistic and more like the older Halo games. Starting June 3rd, DC's new 52 imprint will be disappearing from their comic book line. They are getting rid of about half of their new 52 comic book lines. They're still going to continue about half of them, but starting uh, with that. So they're going to continue 25 storylines that they have been going since the new 52 reboot launch. And they're going to introduce 24 new comic book lines uh, that don't necessarily have anything to do with the new 52 uh, storyline. So I think that's definitely a good step. Not a lot of people have enjoyed New 52, including myself. There have been some good things that come out of it, such as like Forever Evil. But uh, DC is sort of expanding on the different kind of stories that they can uh, create and, and hopefully increase the fan base of you know the older readers as well as new readers. And I hate it when companies try to appeal to new people because that's they will come on their own. You don't have to you know pander to them. Just you know make take care of your own first. Um, but overall, I think this is a good move. This will uh, be happening at the end of the uh, convergent uh, storyline with uh, the Brainiac bubble, all the universes coming in together thing that I mentioned a couple months ago. And uh, starting with uh, Free Comic Book Day uh, this year, they will give out some of the new comic books of their new line of comics that will no longer be called the New 52 because there are now only 49 comic book lines, and I guess the New 49 just didn't sound as good. And in the year of things coming back, that's right, things are coming back this year. We had like Surge and uh, come back last year, and we have the Yumbo sandwich that nobody wanted from Burger King to come back. We had French Toast Crunch come back. We have crispy M&Ms coming back. Well, now we're getting an awesome TV show from 12 years ago. BattleBots is coming back. You might remember BattleBots on Comedy Central or the you know UK version Robot Wars, which was just as awesome. There's going to be a six. They've ordered a six episode. Uh, series of battle bots on abc this time so a network show so that might hopefully help they're going to make it a little bit more reality based in that they're going to focus more on the building of the robots and the teams into it and since they're not going to have as many robots fighting they're only going to have six episodes you know kind of i guess to, to test the waters um very very interesting to me because i love the battle bots um you know it only lasted for five five seasons from was it to 197 to 2003 i guess since it was 12 years ago i mean i love battle bots and they are they're not going to have them in weight classes if you might remember there was lightweight middleweight heavyweight and super heavyweight well now they're all going to be one weight class uh in this six episode series um i don't know if they're going to be half hour or an hour i hope it's an hour because i love me some robots fighting each other um, my favorite was Dissector, uh, maybe it may it'd be awesome if he came back, or like Biohazard, or you know, Atomic Wedgie, or Minion. I mean, there's so many awesome battle bots that uh, it'd be awesome if they came back, or some people built homages to them, or if some old build teams came back, that'd be pretty cool. But I just, I, I just, it was little robots fighting each other, it was so cool. How can people not love this? Why did it have to go away? Why was the Robot Wars, you know, arena sold for $328? You know, I mean, it. its time did come and go, go, I guess. I remember there was a, supposed to be a BattleBots a video game for the PlayStation 2 and the PC that I was super psyched for that I saw ads in on, like, Game Pro and Game Informer and stuff, but that got canceled when the show got canceled because apparently it didn't do well enough on Comedy Central. But hopefully in this day and age, people are a little bit more thirsty for some robot fighting, because I know this guy is. And as always, thank you all for watching this episode of What Mattered. One of these comes out every single Saturday, every single week. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, hit the subscribe button or at least leave a comment. Or if you're pressed for time, like so many of you, good awesome people are maybe a thumbs up or down to let me know how I'm doing and uh, you know keep moving forward One more.